So, hello fellow Earthlings. This is Earthlings 645546372828. And regarding the David Dobrik and the Vlog Squad video allegations, I too have been coerced by alcohol and you have to learn from the experience, I guess. Um, I'll get into it in a minute. Of course, I am Earthling yada yada yada. I'm an ex-army reservist. I have a couple of degrees. I have traveled a bit. Um, I have lost uh, more than 80 pounds and I've kept it off for more than five years. And that's it for me. So, um, of course, it's in the news, um, the allegations about what is, let's be honest, something that is probably not that unusual for many young people. Um, it's probably not something like 10% of the population, maybe, maybe 20. It's not like overwhelmingly high, but I'm sure that a lot of people have had experiences on either end of that situation. Um, it's really, really not cool to find yourself on the bottom end of a situation like that where you feel as if you're being taken advantage of and probably are. And it's not cool to be the person who, whether with friends or alone, is doing that to other people. Um, it, I don't know, I guess it feels like it is something that is an experience to be had. Maybe it's something that people expect of you. But it really isn't cool at all. Now, on my end, me personally, I have been in the situation of the young woman who was apparently had sex with a member of the vlog squad. Um, I have been, have I been in a situation where I've been pressured to drink? Yeah, there's been pressure, but um, the person who was trying to coerce me, at least in the subsequent occasions when they did, um, I wasn't as intimidated, I suppose, as I would be, because it, it was a man. And I've had like, let's say three different experiences, or at least three different experiences with that. One where I pretty much kind of ended up in the situation as a young lady. I, the person did not like have intercourse or anything with me per se, but I guess it would be considered sex. And I guess I would not have under normal circumstances consented to it. Um, I would not have gone along with it at all, but having had that experience, it meant that when subsequent experiences um, happened to me, not with a multitude of people, just one other person, I guess, they tried once, they weren't really sure that they did it right, I guess, so they tried again to get me drunk and do whatever, I guess, they wanted or had planned to do. So, you know, much later in life, with more experience with alcohol, um, I knew what my limit was. And when this person was trying to get me to drink past that, I just didn't. I did not um, comply. And I, I said, like I said, you know, they, I guess they tried another time, they invited me over supposedly to help them fix a problem that they had with their computer. They gave me a beer, which is great. I'll take your free beer. They gave me another okay, this is getting a little bit, they gave me a third, and I'm like, okay, this is my wall, I don't go past three beers, um, like that at all, because I'm probably going to get a hangover, and mm, I'm not doing that, so, yeah, you know, it, it happens that we're not born with any kind of, um, radar, per se, about the things that can happen to us, so, but, you know, my experience as a guy, number one, I was not, I don't think I've ever really explained 
to many people. One person maybe knows, maybe my sister knows half of the story. So as a woman, um, I know that having company is supposed to protect you, number one. But that protection can be a rumor mill where people are like, look at what happened to this person. Like uh, in that movie, A Fine Young Woman, um, there were other girls who were present for, you know, the issue about that movie. And they didn't step in to prevent anything from happening. But still, after the, you know, the event, the people will come out and call you names and remind you of that over and over and over and over again. And even if that doesn't happen, there weren't any witnesses, you will be in the presence of other people who, when they hear about what has happened to a particular individual, they will call that individual names. In which case, you can internalize that, hey, nobody knows, but I was in that exact same situation. And is that what I am? Is that what I'm supposed to, to be? Um, what if happens if anybody ever finds out? What if I'm ever in that situation again? And there is pressure there that would not be on me as a guy because, hmm, well, well, I guess it depends because as you can see with the other controversial stuff that uh, Mr. Dobrik has been involved in with respect to that guy, Seth, having other people, other males, view you as being um, homosexual, people on the surface in big cities and towns are safe. But in small cities and towns, um, um, non-cosmopolitan, non-diverse areas, it's not, it's not going to be a positive, no matter the fact whether people can get married or they can't get married, it's not going to fly as well. So I suppose if, if a lot of different people knew, that's a whole other ball game would have been for me, per se. But um, yeah, I guess as a guy, I can, I still have some kind of defense, I think, that would, women might not have. Because for one thing, um, I'm not going to be constantly pressured or having to consider that this thing might happen to me again unless I frequent that kind of environment where there are a lot of people who might want to even try something like that with me. But um, on the whole, it is... I don't know what we can do as a society to change the likelihood that this would happen in the future. People like to bring up the people that they've met who seem to be indicators of a change. Like um, Whitney Cummings repeatedly talks about, uh, I guess, one individual that she knows who was asking, can I take off your bra when they were being intimate? And her response is a well, rhetorical response to him i don't know if she actually said it but um was well can you because she's kind of like she doesn't like men who are asking for permission to do the next step and do the next step and do the next step but here we are with respect to the allegations from the vlog squad where one of the girls is saying that the that one of the guys, that he picked her up and put her on his lap without asking her permission. And that's kind of odd. Um, I don't know what the kids nowadays are doing, but I don't see that that actually happens in real life. Can I pick you up and put you on my lap? Can I tickle you? Is it okay that I'm continuing to tickle you? I don't know that that is how that works. Is it okay if we wrestle? Is it okay if I move in for a kiss? 
that can totally I have you know I can't remember what this where this girl is Lacey Green but she used to extol on the the fantastic quality of asking for permission she thought that it was so sexy and so I really have to go look for Lacey Green and see what she's up to but I have never heard any other females going into that kind of of conversation about this person asking for permission what you really hear about in movies and tv is girls excitedly or young women excitedly talking to each other about what he did next not what he asked to do next but what and then he kissed me and then he opened the door and then he um well some people get upset if you make order their food for them or something but some people love it i don't know but then if you keep asking people questions people are like why do you keep asking me so many questions so it's it's a minefield but and this is one thing that i think that i wanted to to bring up is that at the end of the day i think everybody 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 really needs to do some kind of is it pick up artist um like training or at least read about how pick up artists work because i think the these guys would never have found themselves in a situation that they did if they had had some kind of experience with using pick up devices and i'm not talking about a neg where you insult somebody to make them feel um bring them down to your level or what something like that i'm talking about the overall idea if some girls end up at your house and you feel and i think this applies to everybody and you feel that oh they're not being um they're not being complicit uh, compliant sorry then you just say thanks for coming and you go on to the next girl that's that's what you do you're probably going to find or maybe not maybe it's the next night everything doesn't have to happen today right away when you think that it should i have been i recall being at places where you know i might ask someone to dance with them i don't know how weird that does that sound but when i do that i might ask 10 different girls and one of them says ne- yes and that's great and sometimes maybe nobody says yes and it's not so great but you know when that person is saying yes who may have seen you walk away from other people that they really want to be there they really want to be involved in what you're doing and i think this one itis that guys and girls can have with this whole well of course this is not a true love situation but i think that people need to know more period and that might help people need to know that they can say no and just get up and leave no matter what and people need to know that if it's not working out then cut your losses and move on anyway that's my two cents feel free to like subscribe share comment dislike any of that stuff um the same way that you would like people to give feedback if this was something that you were putting on YouTube have a good one peace